Welcome back, everybody. My name is Sharon Quinn, and I'm also known as the original Runway Diva, and you are watching Model Behavior. Class is officially in session. Now, uh, in this segment, this is part two of my segment called Ask the Agents, and I'm brought back uh, Dale Noel and Tashina Zamlowski of True Model Management and Tony Ufredo of Orb Model Management. Welcome back, people. Let's mm -hmm. just pick it up where we left off. You, in our previous episode, you had brought up uh, social media. Yes. So what I want to know is how you guys feel social media has changed just the face of fashion as it is today. It's changed the fashion because the models have direct contact with clients, the consumers. They can put their personality out there. Before, it used to be that a model was on the cover and you really didn't know the personality. Nowadays, personality comes into play. You see before and after photos, you know, when they wake up, what they're doing, what they like with their breakfast, a little bit more about them. So and do you think that, that, that that's a good thing? Do we really want to know that much about them? Do you think it, it's had a positive effect or a negative effect? It depends whose perspective you're looking at. For some of the models who have great followings, over hundreds of thousands, there are clients who call us and ask for models that have followings, and those are the ones they want to book. And they'll call us just to hire them to post a picture you know, of themselves doing something or wearing their product. So we, social media is just it's crazy. Well, a lot of the models come and tell me they say when they go on the casting they'll ask them for their um, Instagram followers, yeah. and how many followers they have mm -hmm. yeah. really yep. it's definitely playing a big because role. it's it's the new way that a pers person in the demographic of 18 to 34 which is what they look at is looking at sh that is shopping they are looking at this stuff kids don't sit and watch TV anymore this is what they do. So this is how the con this is how the person selling the product gets Market, to them. Yeah. The marketing. Mm -hmm. So your social, so your social media page can can either help or hinder you in getting a job in 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 the this, I, the modeling climate now. I, mm -hmm. I guess hinder you in a way if something on there was just not. Good, like I mean, in the way. Well, what of, if you're but, a stunningly beautiful model, but maybe you're not up on social media like that? I mean, well, as the agent, we tell them. I just told a guy today. I said, at, take at least one selfie a day. Do you do you tell selfie. your models that as well? Do you tell you guys? Yeah, tell them we tell them to be posting, but we're also we've had to tell a lot of people what not to post. Yeah, take things I down. Yeah. <laughs> um, crazy on the social media checking up on people and I'll be scrolling through and I'm like, like oh, we'll screenshot and like no. send it to them. I'm like, you need to take this down now or what did you tag in that or, you know, or a lot of people are trying to put up like the no makeup selfies. That whole trend is going around too, but you still need to make sure you look like a model in those pictures because if a client sees it and you know, you're a little scary. They're gonna be like, "Oh my, that's what she looks like without makeup." So you really have to be careful what you're putting out there. See, this is what I don't like about this whole social media fashion mix. Because, and I hate to be dating myself by saying back in my day, but back in my day, you didn't have <laughs> well, all of that. No so cell I didn't. Phones, I no had so you had some semblance of privacy. Now you have, you have nothing. And mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't think I like that very much. But you, you choose to do it or not to do it. And if you want to be in the game, you have to choose to do it. So one selfie a day, you tell you tell. I tell them to take at least one selfie a day. And you tell them to have the Instagram, the Twitter, and all of these I, things? The Instagram's, Instagram's the, most important. Yeah, now. that's the one. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm not doing this. I'm going to have that mess. Well, it's a whole other job. It is. I mean, I had a model who came into me who said his friend she is a model and wasn't really modeling anymore because she had so many followers. And I don't know how she did it, but clothing companies would send her clothes to take pictures of herself, and they would pay her to do this. See, that And bloggers are doing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. now. Yeah, bloggers have a lot of power. Now, how, does that, how do you feel about that being model managers? Does that impede upon your business when... Someone who is, uh, what's the good way of, 
who is technically non-industry standard, mm -hmm. and they're comp they're outsourcing or they're getting outsourced all this work that would normally have gone through your channels mm -hmm. beforehand. How does that? How yeah, does that it make even guess? happens with models that uh, are, could be under contract and clients reach out to them directly and you know causes a problem. It definitely has an impact on the business, but it also has a pos positive impact on our business for our models that um, have great social media and the clients call us to book their, to put selfies of them wearing their clothes. So that all works through with us managing too and we help brand them and we'll introduce them to clients that will want that type of work as well. And I think, did you guys say before, before we started taping, I thought I heard somebody say that you, models don't carry portfolios, they don't carry books anymore. Yeah. No, they're not paper, they carry iPad portfolios. So it's all digital. It's easy to update. Yeah. You can have different books, yep. like especially you know if you're going to more like an editorial casting or commercial, having those two different books instead of mm -hmm. carrying actually two yeah, physical have a commercial books. Commercial one, your editorial one, they can Athletic. all be right there. We can <laughs> upload and do it while they're on the job. They're going somewhere. Like, hey, this picture just came in. Put it on there. Change the format. Mm -hmm. So it's all. <sighs> Yeah, you have to wait for it. You have to wait for the print. They're you less bulky and heavy. You have to keep up. I had a, wow. I had I'd say it was about two years ago, twice I had a client say, two different clients, say if the models did not show up with portfolios, if they came with electronic, they would be turned away. And the one of the models came back to one of, from one of them and said to me, if they didn't the person didn't have a book, they told them they couldn't come, that to to leave. Why do you think that is? It was I think because some people, and there's not many left, are old school mm -hmm. and want that. Some people say to me, I like the book because it's bigger and you could see more. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you have to stay current. So if the okay, youth so and you everybody got, is you, going you this way. You got your little iPad, but now you're at the cast and you can't come to because you don't have a book. But it was told to the agents they had to come with a book. So yeah, we still, said so you, you have to go with a book. We still have books at our office, so if we need them, so we can pick pictures come in, in and, pick and up we a... have you know, printers right on our block that we can do them really quickly in and have them out the door. But nobody know, asked for that But no one really yeah. asks. We have it just in case. <laughs> what? Oh my, okay, all right. It's an electronic world. Mm -hmm. And also on it, you know, you can make them look bigger. You want to zoom in and, you know. And, yeah. And they're very clear. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. I'm I'm real old school. That's why I'm retired. Cause <laughs> I'm, I don't I don't want to flip through. Your you have iPad. to get into it. Okay. Just make sure the screen is clear. Don't exactly. bring your well, screen with fingerprints on and it. Exactly. Drip things and, and stuff because a client doesn't want to touch it. So make sure. It's clear. <laughs> and you have to use your manager, or your agent's cover. You know, you don't go in with like. You know, curses on it and graffiti. And, and, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I, I, I just uniform. felt more like a model carrying my little book around. They don't well, want to the, the models because the the, I, the the pad is lighter. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and so, they have the cover. We make covers that look like a cover of a book, so it will so still say the name They're of like, the oh, company. They're like, true iPad cover, and it's yeah. like the same kind of feeling. But yeah, just smaller. So they have iPads specifically for so the picture. cover. No, they, the cover. We give them covers that they can put their iPad in. Oh, you have to so go buy many, the iPad. Like a sleeve. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's like a sleeve, yeah. Okay, oh, that's okay. All right. I'll take that. <laughs> okay, Sabrina gave me some questions to toss out to you guys, so um, that's what we're going to do. And she wants to know what is it that models are not doing that they should be doing in order to get signed with an agency? I think number one, treating modeling like a business. I feel like some models walk in and think that just because they're good looking or they might measure and they have some of the criteria, they expect everyone else to do the work for them. Nah. Yeah. Well, yeah. society, yeah. I don't know. And it's not everyone, but uh, I feel no, it's that. No, it's a majority, but not everybody. Like you get like the professional and then you yeah. get, but this is how they're raised. I should, they go in, people always tell me they come into a job and they want to be the president of the company and have right. never worked anywhere before. Yeah, so it's, it's like, the oh. same mentality because mm -hmm. yeah. it's just a different profession. Right. I want to be on the cover. I don't want to do that well, other job. Same question. Yeah, well, it's also, too, that like people don't realize that it's not just you get signed and then you're working. Like You have to test. You have to learn how to pose. 
And, you know, girls are like, just expect to be working right away. And I'm like, you need at least a year of like us getting you tested, like going on maybe smaller castings. So letting us see how you can actually move because you can't go to the big clients if you're not ready for that because they expect you to be moving, changing, like know what you're doing. And if you're not ready to go there yet, it makes, you know, Drew look bad. It makes the model look bad. So so you'll keep a new model in development for about a year before you... It depends on yeah. how much they invest into testing and how much they actually put into it. You know, are they practicing their poses in front of the mirror? I'm like, take selfies of yourself. Have your roommate take pictures and, you know, see what angles are good and bad because then you're going to be figuring that out before you go on a test. And it's all about what you put into it. Like she says, it's like, it's their business. We're helping them and putting them in front of the right people, but they have to look at it that way, investing into themselves. Do you have a problem with getting them to, because I know when I was uh, booking, getting girls to test was the hardest thing it's very in hard. the world to do. They do one test and they're like, well, like I'm going to oh, no. step. <laughs> okay. yeah. And I don't want to pay for it, I want it for free. Yeah. yeah. And some photographers want, you know, they want specific models and they will test them for free and we that's so they that can build well. up their That's books. part of our mm -hmm. work, yeah. And, you know, we make those arrangements, but there are some models that, you know, photographers aren't choosing to test for free, and they could be great, but maybe that's not their their market. Is it hard to find, uh, well, I know agencies, you guys have your own photographers that you kind of like to use mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. yourselves, but do you, um, is it hard to find a photographer who will test, maybe not for free, but at a good price. But at a good price. <laughs> you can find them. You know, it, you, you have to weed through it. You just have to look for somebody who wants to. It's not the 80s anymore yeah. where the money was, like, yeah. everybody had. Oh, yes, I know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So photographers have to eat, too. And a lot of them are like, I, you know, unless, like, she said, unless it's that girl that they want to test, they're going to. So, so what's, what's, like, the, the, the going, going rate right. in 2015? for a, a, a test with a, a good photographer? I mean, it, it, yeah, it, it can range anywhere. Range. Well, mm -hmm. for a guy, it's always going to be cheaper. So Why? Why is that? Because you don't have they're hair and makeup and all that. Done faster. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a girl, you need hair and makeup, styling, styling mm -hmm. with a guy. It, so it's it's all, time. It can range anywhere from 300 to 5300 for a guy mm -hmm. to maybe and 600 it'll be dub double for the girl. Then, yeah, and then some of the top photographers, it's thousands. You know, it all depends. Yeah, that's and, why I said good, and, and yeah. not great. Yeah, because you know? I know. Yeah, a, a, yeah. A, a, yeah. Just starting so out, you just need a good photographer yeah. that's mm -hmm. going to take good, decent pictures. Five hundred to a thousand. Yeah, no, no, no. Tashina deals with that a lot. Well, yeah, just, and I mean, we have different ranges for people too, and it depends on the type of work they're getting. You know, like obviously, if you're a fit model and you just need basic pictures to show your shape, Thank you don't need it to be as strong, but you need someone who can capture your proportions mm -hmm. the right way, mm -hmm. you know? So, so. there's definitely, a, a for fit models, mm -hmm. it, like if all you do is fit, there's a certain way that your card mm -hmm. should kind of look. You really want to show your shape. You don't want to be in, you know, big jackets or anything. Like they want to see your shape. You want to look proportionate. And we actually have special photographers that they're very good at shooting fit girls. So like, I know that's where I, I send my fit girls, but mm -hmm. someone who's used to shooting print and trying to make someone's legs look long and all that stuff, it's mm -hmm. like, we don't really mm -hmm. want that that's with fit. Like we want them to look proportionate, so. So that's, could fit be with the, the girl with the long torso and the short leg? <laughs> she was like, uh, no. No. Well, long torso swimwear. She's going home. Long torso swimwear or something like that. They, they need proportion still, but there are, I mean, we've gotten, you know, we've gotten requests before just for like, someone's arm and we needed arms of all different sizes or mm -hmm. oh so you do body parts and y'all do everything over there we get, yeah, we're doing we get a mix now, yeah. of stuff <laughs> now know. what do you specialize in tony at orb is it just you are, you know what you're not going to do it to me is it we just we do print we do shows showroom i do a little bit of fit because my background when i first started in the business as a booker it was with a fit agency what's the difference between showroom and fit is there a difference? Fit mm -hmm. is where they take. You know what? She was a fit model, so I'm going to have. Her, even though I know, it, I'm going to have her explain it because she was actually with right. the clients doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, a fit model needs to have the proportions that the designer or the manufacturer 
feels is representative of their customer. Okay. So this model needs to also verbalize how he or she feels in the clothes and work with pattern makers, technical designers, people who actually work on the aesthetics as well as the, the construction of the garment. So mm -hmm. they'll put it on clients like models that could look model like also and could be the muse for their line because mm -hmm. the designers who do the aesthetics work with them as well but they have to be like hmm I can't move my arm forward the armholes high and tight or I can't sit in these pants and you have to really get into detail about the technical aspects of the garment now for showroom some crossover like fit models who are starting out who are that busy or the busy ones whose clients really need to show their buyers exactly what they intend as a fit like and who their customer is mm -hmm. they might book them for showroom but the showroom it's a little bit more lenient and some of those might be a little taller than the fit model they might be a little slimmer they might have broader shoulders there might be little they try to get them a little bit more show like so is it you know? the showroom is, is is that like having like a, a mini or a small fashion show in so the, a is little it sort less of like that? informal in most cases. They might do many shows, but in most cases, it's buyers sitting at a table, and they'll be like, hmm, I'm thinking of buying this one. Can you put it on the model? And, you know, oh. si similar to what they do at the trade shows. Okay, okay. You know, so they'll Does say, that pay oh. well? Not as well. In most cases, not as well as fit modeling or some of the other types. Okay. Usually, in many cases, they'll want them a full day I want to cut down the rate and they can it's not as specific as some of the other modeling but in many cases we can get the same rate if um, the client has very specific requests and they want certain models because it it depends on the model who's doing it okay and how much other work they're giving up to be there okay you know it's okay. all about you know how many people who really want to book them too, or how much knowledge they have, or who their clients are. You know, some of them might say, I want the model who's the Calvin Klein showroom model in our showroom, or something like that. I don't know. Or just, okay. you know, <laughs> you get requests like that, or they'll say, I want the fit model who does J. Crew, and I want them to fit my clothes too. And some clients we have, you know, confidentiality clause that we can't say that they're the model, you know. But in most cases, it's pretty open. They can write it on their client list. Okay, let's talk about runway. Mm -hmm. um, now, everybody who does fit, and everyone, well, not even fit, most of the girls who do print, there's not a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, no, let me change Specific that. Specific runway there's, girls? There's runway, there used to be like a lot Pat more work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, does it still happen like that now, or mm -hmm. is it less work? You do have girls that will do just runway. Because they they're skinny, though. They're very skinny. <laughs> and maybe, and again, I'm not being mean, but maybe not, the face isn't the greatest for print. You understand okay. what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not being mean, but, so you have girls like that, but then a lot of the print girls are on the runways now. I mean, it's not like it was. Yes, but a lot of them can't walk. They don't care because so... those girls are in the print ads, and again, it kind of goes back to social media. But then it's not about <laughs> runway. But then sorry. it's not about runway anymore. But there's no longer the art of runway. Back but okay, now I'm gonna say something. There's really no art of fashion anymore. Nobody cares about fashion because everybody wants the the the, I, the phone. Everything's electronic. That's what's important. People will go, kids will go to Forever Twenty One H and M, but they won't go like to a designer. Like when we were younger, where you wanted Calvin Klein or this, they're not looking at that. They're like, let me just put on anything, but I want the brand new phone, I want the brand new app, I want that's what's more important. That's why fashion really so you has think to that have a, a comeback. A com okay. Is that, well, there's some crazy stuff happening in fashion yeah, but right now. Not like it was. You you know it used well, to. Well, I don't mean crazy good. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't mean crazy good. I mean stuff like Fashion Week this, this year. I don't attend Fashion Week for the most part because it's never anything there for me. But now that Mercedes Benz is no longer right, everybody's doing it. The buzz yeah, seems to be a lot problem. less now. It mm -hmm. seems to have changed. Like well, it's not as does. fierce as it was. Well, it's different mm -hmm. locations. I mean, like. Mark Jacob just showed the other night at the Ziegfeld Theater. I know I work around the corner, yeah. across and the street actually. That was 
I mean, he wanted that carnival-like atmosphere. It was something different. But, I mean, everybody's having it in all these different places. Did, it's, did, do you guys go to any of the big, since you have straight size divisions, I would think you would get invitations. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe not. No. So you guys no, don't go do. to, to the get, Fashion Week shows? We get invitations to the shows. We like to, we attend a few each, or like, I would say the people at the office attend the least amount, and we would give them away usually to a model or a client, or um, I don't know, everyone usually goes to about one. Yeah, it kind of depends too, and we have some good, you know, like a lot of our models will fit for designers that are having runway shows, but mm -hmm. Um, you know, some of the smaller ones are really good about inviting the fit model who actually fit the line to the show mm -hmm. and their booker or something like that. But kind of like the higher up you get of the company, they're kind of yeah, don't the even, the they don't about. even know about the fit model. Now, what, like, about, <laughs> what about plus sizes during um, Fashion Week? It, mm -hmm. Has the work increased at all? Aside from Ashley Graham's show, which I know about. I was going to throw that at you. <laughs> 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 she had a show. Yes. She had two. What, but do you see it changing at all? Because even when I was doing it, there, I mean, I love walking runway, but there wasn't a lot yeah. of work. No. And I, mean, I don't think there is, there isn't a lot now. There There's isn't. Some, a little more, but not a lot more. Do you see that changing at all? A little bit. I mean, you have the do Project you, Runway and... Yeah, there's plus size. If it's, yeah, right, but it's, the whole if it's plus size not... specific, the show, then it's going to be plus size. But if it's a regular designer, they really don't put a plus size girl in the right. show. Why? Go ask them. I'm asking you. <laughs> we, you you're we, behind the scenes, you know. We don't make that decision. Yeah, we have to just quiet. follow. That's the whole thing. We have to do what they want. We don't always think it's right, but we can only do what we're asked to do. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing too. It's about like, you know, the sample size that they're making the clothes. So I was kind of upset because I was seeing a lot of people commenting on the Project Runway show and, you know, Ashley Graham and they're like, mm -hmm. those girls are not plus size. Like, get a size like 24 up there. Get that. And are showing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you what? say oh, what I night. thought you said? Um, what the go, go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm saying that, um, you know, People are saying that they are not representing plus size people, basically, and kind of complaining that they're on the runway. But, you know, I'm thinking it's like, it's good. They're, you know, people that are bigger. They're not a sample size, too. But they still have to keep in mind that, like, they have to still be models. Right. They're exactly. still, like, they're and representing mm -hmm. a brand. Exactly. There's still a certain quality that you need you have to have the look you have to have the shape you have to fit into the too because what's the thing but you also the size 26 28 they not at while i don't think that anyone should be excluded from fashion i think that if you want a size 24 26 28 on the runway then you should produce that show rather than Complain bitch that someone and moan else is about doing it. Someone mm -hmm. else that's not interested in doing that. Right. right. And if the average woman in straight size is 14 and on the runway they're showing zero the twos, two. fours, mm -hmm. mainly twos, that's a big difference. Yeah. So it's like if you're going from plus and then a 14 showing it, it's, you know. Yeah, it's been in, it's been in increments for years because for a while they was trying to palm off the 10 and 12s and call that plus. Mm -hmm. We weren't buying it then either, but it's better now. Yes, but you also now at least they're obviously fuller and, and they're not curvy. doing any of this over in Europe. Sure, there's plus sizes in there's Europe. There's plus sizes, but you don't see shows coming out of there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, there's 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 some stuff happening over there. There's yeah, but what is it? Uh, Brit British fashion. They don't change the name yeah, like three not. times, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> th there's a movement over no, there. No, no, I mean in the mainstream shows. They oh, they did put, they, well, no, I mean, Gautier and, 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 uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, they, they did that, yeah, they did it a while ago. That, yeah, and the girl, that Velvet, they, she's really plus. Yeah, but I'm saying they're not doing it as a standard. I think if you saw it more as a standard there in the shows, it would filter over here more. And not that you don't... Th I don't mm -hmm. think it would be the reverse. Why is that? I think mm -hmm. because over there, Milan, Paris... See, they have high-end shows. We don't. We have ready-to-wear. We don't do haute couture shows mm -hmm. here. So 
if they were doing it at those high-end shows, I think then here, everybody would go, oh, look at what they're doing at those shows. We need to do that at our ready-to-wear shows. Okay. And I, they all look back and forth at each other, but I don't think Europe looks at us fashion-wise to say we have to do that. We want to emulate them. Right. Yeah. Okay, last question, because I think we're going to be running out of time in a minute. This went faster than the first segment. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you guys each, what key qualities do you think that models need to have to, subs to sustain longevity in this business? In this business today, mm -hmm. what do you think they need? I'm going to start with you, Tish. They need you know, like a hard skin, I want to say, because this is a very hard business. Um, there is a lot of criticism, you know, and you can't look at everyone who's standing next to you at the casting. You have to go in there and be like, okay, I'm going to get this job. Like, this job's for me. I don't, maybe I think he has a better nose, maybe he has more muscles, whatever it is. But you have to go in there and acting like you're supposed to be there and you know and if you don't get it you're like okay this wasn't my thing you know there's other jobs out there for me that's good advice mm -hmm. Tony I think they have a separate outlet I think besides the job of modeling mm -hmm. because it is a job it's a business I think they need to also have something else that they like that they can see themselves doing I think that gives you longevity where it's not mm -hmm. just this because we all get old I mean, it happens, you want it to happen because the alternative, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think if you say, I'm doing this, and I'm really good at it, and I want to do it, but I'm also interested in doing it, designing accessories, doing this, I think that also So you're talking helps. about transitioning out, mm -hmm. not, preparing Not even transitioning, yourself. but I think as you're doing it, I think, like, the girls back in the 90s, they were always so interested in fashion, and I think, that helped make them a better model. And I think if you have these other interests, it will help you be a better model and take you someplace after you're getting after to that point. Life after modeling? Yeah, that okay. I think that would help a lot. I find that when clients are genuinely interested in the model as a person too, they build relationships and it's more repeat bookings you know they like models who are good Confident inside and outside <laughs> all right guys we are almost out of time i want to thank my guest lecturers today dale noel tashina zamlowski and tony ufredo for joining me today um before i go i want to leave you guys with a few thoughts as always surround yourself with positive people and positive things and remember that you can't change the game without first learning the rules to the game and lastly do what you love and love what you do Thanks for watching, guys. Class is officially dismissed. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, P Twitter, Pinterest, all of that social media stuff that I don't really like, but they forced <laughs> me to talk about it. Make sure you do that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Yeah, I